Well, good morning, church. Welcome to another daily Bible reading as we have reached the last reading for this week. Let me go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have in your word. We thank you for the spirit uh, that you have given to us to be able to discern and understand your will and purpose as we read through this. We pray that you'd be glorified by the result, and we give thanks and pray these things in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. So we take a look at our passage for this morning. We're in Ezekiel chapters 31 to 33 and John chapter 11. And we continue with our focus upon Egypt. The last couple of chapters have been um, either on Pharaoh or the Egyptians. And as we look at chapter 31, verse 1, we see in the 11th year, in the third month, on the first of the month, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his hordes, whom are you like in your greatness? Behold, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon, with beautiful branches and forest shade, and very high, and its, tops, its, its top was among the clouds. The waters made it grow, and deep made it, and uh, the waters made it grow, the deep made it high. With its rivers, it continually extended all around its planting place, and sent out its channels to all the trees of the field. Therefore its height was loftier than all the trees of the field, and its bows became, became many, and its branches long because of the many waters as it spread them out. All of the birds of the heavens nested on its bows, and under its branches all the beasts of the fields gave birth, and all great nations lived under its shade. So it was beautiful in its greatness, and the length of its branches, for its roots extended to many waters. The cedars in God's garden could not match it. The cypresses could not compare with its bows, and the plain trees could not match its branches. No tree in God's garden can compa could compare with it in its beauty. And these, these are tremendous statements that um, the Egyptians, uh, the trees that were there were even beautiful, more beautiful than the trees in the Garden of Eden. And that's not to say that they made it more beautiful than what God made it, because all of it comes from God. But this shows the beauty that God had blessed Egypt with. In verse 19, I made it beautiful and with the multitude of its branches and all the trees of Eden, which were in the garden of God, were jealous of it. Verse 10, therefore, thus says the Lord God, because it is high in stature and has set its top among the clouds and its heart is haughty in its loftiness. Therefore, I will give it into the hand of a despot of the nations. He will thoroughly deal with it according to its wickedness. I have driven it away. Alien tyrants of the nation have cut it down and left it on the mountains and in all the valleys. Its branches have fallen and its bows have been broken in all the ravines of the land and all the people of the earth have gone down from its shade and left it. On its ru ruin, all the birds of the heaven will dwell and all the beasts of the field will be on its fallen branches so that all the trees by the water may not be exalted in their stature, nor set their top among the clouds, nor their well-watered mighty ones stand erect in their height, for they have all been given over to death, to the earth beneath, among the sons of men, with those who go down to the pit. And verse 15, Thus says the Lord God, On the day when it went down to Sheol, it caused, I caused lamentations. I closed the deep over it and held back its water, and its many waters were stopped up. And I made Lebanon mourn for it, and all the trees of the field wilted away on account of it. I made the nations quake at the sound of its fall when I made it go down to Sheol, with those who go down to the pit and all the well-watered trees of Eden. The choicest and best of Lebanon were comforted in the earth beneath. They also went down with it to Sheol, to those who were slain by the sword, and those who were its strength lived under its shade among the nations. To which among the trees of Eden are you, thus equal in glory and greatness. Yet you will be brought down with the trees of Eden to the earth beneath. You will lie in the midst of the uncircumcised, with those who were slain by the sword, so it is, so is Pharaoh and all his hordes, declares the Lord God. And in Ezekiel 32, we see a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse 1, in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, on the first of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation over Pharaoh, king of Egypt, 
and say to him, You compared yourself to a young lion of the nations. Yet you are like the monster in the seas, and you burst forth in your rivers, and muddied the waters with your feet, and fouled their rivers. Thus says the Lord God, Now I will spread my net over you with a company of many peoples, and they shall lift you up in my net. I will leave you on the land, I will cast you on the open field, and I will cause all the birds of the heaven to dwell on you, and I will satisfy the beasts of the whole earth with you. I will lay your flesh on the mountains and fill the valleys with your refuse. I will also make the land drink the discharge of your blood as far as the mountains and the ravines will be full of you. And when I extinguish you, I will cover the heavens and darken their stars. I will cover the sun and with a cloud and the moon will not give its light. All the shining lights in the heavens I will darken over you and will set darkness on your land, declares the Lord God. Verse 9, I will also trouble the hearts of many peoples when I bring your destruction among the nations into the lands which you have not known. I will make many people appalled at you, and their kings will be horribly afraid of you when I brandish my sword before them, and they will tremble every moment, every man for his own life, on the day of your fall. And then we see the sword of the king of Babylon being brought against them. Verse 11, For thus says the Lord God, The sword of the king of Babylon will come upon you. By the swords of the mighty ones I will cause your hordes to fall, all of them are tyrants of the nations, and they will devastate the pride of Egypt, and all its hordes will be destroyed. I will also destroy all its cattle from beside many waters, and the foot of man will not muddy them any more, and the hoofs of beasts will not muddy them. Then I will make their water settle, and will cause their rivers to run like oil, declares the Lord God. When I make the land of Egypt a desolation, and the land is destitute of all of that which filled it, when I smite all those who live in it, then they shall know that I am the Lord. This is a lamentation, and they shall chant it. The daughters of the nation shall chant it. Over Egypt and over all her hordes they shall chant it, declares the Lord God. And verse 17, In the twelfth year, on the fifteenth of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, wail for the hordes of Egypt and bring it down her and the daughters of the powerful nations, to the netherworld, to those who go down to the pit. Whom do you surpass in beauty? Go down and make your bed with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of those who are slain by the sword. She is given over to the sword. They have drawn her and all her hordes away. In verse 21, The strong among the mighty ones shall speak of them, and his helpers from the midst of Sheol, they have gone down, they lie still, the uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Assyria is there, and all her company, her graves are round about her, all of them are slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set in the remotest parts of the pit, and her company is round about her grave. All of them are slain, fallen by the sword, who spread terror in the land of the living. Elam is there, and all her horde around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who went down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth, who instilled their terror in the land of the living, and bore their disgrace with those who went down to the pit. They have made a bed for her among the slain with all of her hordes. Her graves are around it. They are all uncircumcised, slain by the sword, although their terror was instilled in the land of the living. They bore their disgrace with those who go down to the pit. They were put in the midst of the slain. And verse 26, uh, Meshech, uh, Tubal, and all their hordes are there. Their graves surround them. All of them were slain by the sword, uncircumcised, though they instilled their terror in the land of the living. Nor do they lie beside the fallen heroes of the uncircumcised who went down to Sheol with their weapons of war, and whose sword were laid under their heads, but the punishment for their iniquity rested on their bones, though the terror of these heroes was once in the land of the living. But in the midst of the uncircumcised you will be broken and lie with those slain by the sword. There also is Edom, its kings and its princes, for all who who for all their might are laid with those slain by the sword, 
They will lie with the uncircumcised and with those who go down to the pit. There also are the chiefs of the north, all of them, and all the Sidonians, who in spite of the terror resulting from their might, in shame went down with the slain. So they laid down uncircumcised with those slain by the sword and bore their disgrace with those who go down to the pit. These Pharaoh will see, and he will be comforted for all his hordes slain by the sword, even Pharaoh and all his army, declares the Lord. And verse 32, Though I instilled a terror of him in the land of the living, yet he will be made to lie down among the uncircumcised along with those slain by the sword, even Pharaoh and all his hordes, declares the Lord. And then Ezekiel chapter 33, we see now a warning to the Israelites and their watchmen. Verse 1, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people, and say to them, If I bring a sword upon a land, and the people of the land take one man from among them, and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword come upon the land, and blows on the trumpet, and warns the people, then he who hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning and a sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning, his blood will be on himself. But he had taken, but had he taken warning, he would have delivered his, his life. So this saying that his blood will be on himself, we hear similar statements made in the New Testament also. And this just speaks towards responsibility. Verse 6, But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes a person from them, he is a taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require from the watchman's hand. But as for you, son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel, so you will hear a message from my mouth and give them warning from me. And then we see these statements about the righteous and the wicked, um, similar to what we saw in Ezekiel chapter 18. And really these statements about Ezekiel as a watchman, I think we saw similar statements, I want to say from chapter 3 as well. But as we look at verse 8, when I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you will surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall surely die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from your hand. But if you, on your part, warn a wicked man to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he will die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your life. Now as for you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have spoken, saying, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we are rotting away in them. How then can we survive? And verse 11, say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Why then will you die, O house of Israel? And so we see even at this late stage, they still have a chance to repent. And verse 12, and you, son of man, say to your fellow citizens, the righteousness of a righteous man will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As and as for the wickedness of the wicked, he will not stumble because of it in the day when he turns from his wickedness, whereas a righteous man will not be able to live by his righteousness on the day when he commits sin. When I say to the righteous, he will surely live, and he trusts in his righteousness that he, that he commits iniquity, none of his righteous deeds will be remembered. But in that same iniquity of his which he has committed, um, which he, has committed he will die. But when I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and he turns from his sin and practices justice and righteousness, if a wicked man restores a pledge, pays back what he has taken by robbery, walks by the statutes which, in, which ensures life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. And then verse 16, none of his sons, none of his sins that he has committed will be remembered against him. He has practiced justice and righteousness, he shall surely live. Yet your fellow citizens say the way of the Lord is not right, when it is their own way that is not right. When the righteous turn from his righteousness and commits iniquity, then he shall die in it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and practices justice and righteousness, he will live by it. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not right. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. And then Ezekiel is given instructions about those who will come to him but not listen or they will hear him but not act. 
verse 21, now in the twelfth year of our exile, on the fifth of the tenth month, the refugees from Jerusalem came to me, saying, This city has been taken. Now the hand of the Lord has been upon me in the evening before the refugees came, and he opened my mouth at that at the time they came to me in the morning, so my mouth was opened, and I was no longer speechless. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, they who live in these waste places in the land of Israel are saying, Abraham was only one, yet he possessed the land. So to us, who are many, the land has been given as a possession. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, you eat meat with the blood in it. Lift up your eyes to your idols as you shed blood. Should you then possess the land? Verse 26, you rely on your sword, you commit abominations, and each of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you then possess the land? Thus you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely those who are in the waste places will fall by the sword. And whoever is in the open field, I will give to the beast to be devoured. And those who are in the strongholds and in the caves will die of pestilence. I will make the land a desolation and a waste, and the pride of her power will cease. And the mountains of Israel will be desolate so that no one will pass through. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I make the land a desolation and a waste because of all, her, all their abominations which they have committed. But as for you, son of man, your fellow citizens who talk about you by the walls and in the doorways of the houses, speak to one another, each to his brother, saying, Come now and hear what the message is which comes forth from the Lord. They come to you as people come and sit before you as my people and hear your words, and they do not do them, for they do the lustful desires expressed by their mouth, and their heart goes after their gain. Behold, you are to them like a sensual song by one who has a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument, for they hear your words, but they do not practice them. So when it comes to pass, as it surely will, as surely it will, then they will know that a prophet has been in their midst. And then John chapter 11, this is the story of Lazarus and how Jesus raised him. Verse 1, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sister sent word to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, The sickness is not to end in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he then stayed two days longer in the place where he was. It's a very interesting statement. You would think that if he loved him, he would go right away. But he actually waited an additional two days before traveling to where he was. And that explains the response by Martha when he, Jesus sees him. Verse 7, then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go down to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. This he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may awaken him out of sleep. The disciples then said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he was speaking of literal sleep. Verse 14, So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Therefore Thomas, who is called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, so that we may die with him. And then verse 17, So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. 
Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And then verse 28, when she had said this, she went away and called Mary her sister, saying secretly, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and was coming to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and consoling her, when they saw that Mary got up quickly and went out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him, fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, See how he loved him. But some of them could but some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man also from dying? And then verse 38, So Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Mary, Martha, the sister of the deceased, says, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around him with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Therefore many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done believed in him. And then verse 46, But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them the things which Jesus had done. Therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council and were saying, what are we doing for this man is performing many signs? If we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. And we see very clearly from that statement where their real concern was. They were not truly concerned about the coming of the Messiah or trying to validate whether Jesus was the Messiah, but they were concerned about the power and position that would be taken away from them. And verse 49, but one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people and that the whole nation not perish. Now he did not say this on his own initiative, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but in order that he might also gather together into one the children of God who are scattered abroad, so that, so from that day on, they planned together to kill him. Therefore, Jesus no longer continued to walk publicly among the Jews, but went away from there to the country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim. And there he stayed with the disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went up to Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover to purify themselves. So they were seeking for Jesus, and they were saying to one another as they stood in the temple, what do you think, that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he was to report it so that they might seize him. Well, that brings us to the end of our reading for today, as well as the readings for this week. Hopefully that's been helpful to you. Let me go ahead and close us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time that we have had in your word. We thank you for just this blessing um, to be able to read it, to be able to contemplate it, but also the ministry of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that we would continue to grow in our knowledge of your will and purpose, and I pray that you would protect the church of your Son, Jesus Christ, help it continue to grow into the image of your Son, 
And Father, may you be glorified by the result. And we pray these things in his name, Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you once again for joining us this morning. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow in our worship service, whether online or in person. Have a wonderful rest of the day and God bless.